Rose on the march. Hiya, hiya, kids. Well, you better pack another big lunch because we're going once more... Forward! Into the past! Remember back in 1999 when a lot of people went Y2K crazy? When December 31st, 1999 rolled over to January 1st, 2000, computers everywhere were all gonna crash and all hell was gonna break loose. Banks would fail, food supply would be disrupted, the power grid would break, the stock market would crash, cars wouldn't work, telephones would all be dead, and... Oh God, oh God, we're all gonna die? But programmers fixed zillions of lines of code. I sit in a cubicle and I update bank software for the 2000 switch. So we all avoided the end of the world as we know it. The Y2K hysteria was an example of confusing what was possible versus what was probable. But this is real. If the FDA's deeming regulations pass into law as written, your favorite e-cigs and e-liquids are going to be banned. It's the end of the world as we know it. That's no fun. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. I figured if the worst comes to pass, the FDA will ban these, but they'll never ban these. So I was going to go with these mods. And then I thought, all electronics eventually fail. So what to do? Get a flashlight. You know, a mechanical mod. Something simple and durable that will last a long, long time. But what do I know about mechanical mods? Absolutely nothing. I don't know enough to even ask a stupid question. So I asked for advice on Facebook, Twitter, and ECF. And boy! Did I get some feedback? The internet is a wonderful resource, but sometimes too much information is just too much information to process. Welcome to the real world. I was going to need somebody to give me some hands-on time with mechanical mods to figure out which one to get. You've got mail. And then I received an email from a knowledgeable guy who suggested a mechanical mod that I thought was the best one I've ever seen. Now all I had to do was figure out how to get to his brick-and-mortar vape shop, which sounded like a vapor's Shangri-La. Up there! Up there's where we got to go! Up there! Our journey began in Vancouver, British Columbia, and ended at Total Vape, located in the booming megapolis of Redmond, Washington. The trek took us across the Canadian border into the untamed wilderness of Washington State. It was only the promise of new untried vaping gear that kept our intrepid party marching steadily forward into the unknown. As we traveled, I could only imagine the vaping marvels we would soon behold when we finally arrived at our destination. Welcome to Shangri-La.
Once inside the store, it was obvious the trip was worth it. Where to begin? First impressions. Vapor haze. Walking into Total Vape was like walking into a fog bank. Second impression. Look at all this stuff. The largest selection of e-liquid I've ever seen. Here's a list of manufacturers. Cutwood, Bonsai, Ruthless, High Roller Suites, Five Ponds, Traditional, Vape Organics, and High Voltage. And then a ton of hardware for anyone, regardless of where they might be on the vaping continuum. I talked to Alex, the owner, and his business philosophy was very straightforward. Give great customer service and offer the best vaping gear at the best price. And that's how you compete with the internet. I was here to find out about a mechanical mod and a good tank to use with it, but I've never seen so many different mods in one place before. And that's where Max came in. He's the guy that emailed me. He was going to help me take the next step on my vaping journey. Time to check out the new toys. The Skeleton Key is a Tobacco clone stainless steel 22mm 18500-18650 mechanical mod with adjustable copper contacts, a magnetic switch, and a magnetic 1 8 turn locking ring. And I think it's the best mechanical mod I've ever seen on or off the internet. The machining on this thing is fantastic. Just like the movie, it's seamless. Here, I'll show you again. Isn't that neat? We have come to visit you in peace and with goodwill. So, what sits on top of the skeleton key? Here are some cheesy movie hints. Atlantis, the lost continent. That's right! The Atlantis tank by Aspire. What made this tank so compelling to me? The chance to try sub-ohm vaping without having to build my own coils. And to try out an adjustable airflow device. Filling the Atlantis for the first time was a little different from my other bottom coil tanks. You have to prime it by putting a few drops of juice on the filler inside the coil and around the coil's base. Then it's business as usual. Fill it up and screw the base back on. After some trial and error, I found I preferred to vape using the smallest airflow opening at the base of the tank. The 0.5 ohm coil demands an appropriate battery. I'm using an IMR18650 MXJO with a voltage of 4.2 and a continuous output of 35 amps. You do not want to use an incompatible battery with the Atlantis. That would be bad. Now in the past, I've illustrated throat hit like this. A lot of vapors say their gear hits like a truck. Or a freight train. But I gotta tell you, my skeleton key Atlantis combo uh, hits more like... Um, and that's a good thing. Well, for everyone on ECF who yelled at me to throw away everything I was using and get a mechanical mod and start sub ohm vaping. Help me now! Help me! Help me now! Three weeks later. The skeleton key and Atlantis tank continue to work perfectly. All I can say is if you live anywhere near Total Vape of Redmond, go there! And thanks again to Alex and Max for the new toys. When I want to take the next step in vaping, I'm going to go see them. They know. They took that one step beyond. You're seeing it.